Welcome to Bar Chart series of educational webinars. Today's session, trend trading strategies based on market strength and direction. Let's pretend for a moment that you're driving a Formula One race car and you wanna know how well your car is performing. Now, fortunately for you, you can just glance at your instrument panel and see how fast your car is traveling or how high the engine is reveling. Bar chart strength and direction indicator is a quick and reliable way to check your market's trend and momentum. Knowing your trend speed and inclination, if it's accelerating or deaccelerating, will help you to determine the proper path strategy that fits your engine's market's engine. Hello everyone, my name is John Rowland, Bar Chart's Senior Market Strategist, and we at Bar Chart are so confident in this tool's precision and effectiveness that for your convenience, you can literally find it from just one click away, no matter where you are on site. Now today, I'm going to demonstrate its accessibility the terminology behind it, and then some applications. Now, before we get to that, please, well, typically this is where I would introduce my partner and our moderator, Gene Baker, but Gene's on assignment this week. So I've asked my co-host from Bar Chart's premier weekly show, Market on Close, which is on Fridays, uh, Thomas Meyer. So to help step in, welcome. Hello, Thomas. Hello, John, how's it going? Good, thanks for helping out today. I really appreciate that. You got it. Um, I'm excited to do this. Uh, this is definitely one of our most popular and, and requested features. So I'm excited to see uh, what you're gonna showcase. I appreciate that. And so folks, remember today, as you enter questions, you know, or, you know, specific questions, maybe about the website, um, you know, Gene is our expert and uh, Thomas is really just here to help me, uh, you know, rudder the boat, so to speak. So be a little soft on them. If you have any questions, really detailed questions about the website itself, make sure you send them to support at barchart.com. But if you have questions about what I'm talking about, you know, send them through and, and um, Thomas will give them to us. So you ready, Thomas? Ready to go, John. All right. All right. So just a reminder that today is for educational purposes only and decisions to buy, sell, or hold, or trade securities, commodities, or any other investment involves risk and best made on the advice of a qualified financial professional. And under no circumstances shall we be liable for any information, excuse me, any losses or damage that anyone incurs as a result of any trading or in investment activity that you or anyone engages is based on the information or material you receive through barchart.com and our services. Okay, so let's kind of just uh, start with the access and the terminology. So from any individual symbol overview, here's our overview up here, or in particular, here's Apple, be it a stock or an ETF or a futures or a currency, you can ex access Bar Chart's opinion with literally just one click. It's found under the technicals here. That's one way you can get to it. Or the other way is over here through the Bar Chart technical opinion, which would be down here. Now, this is kind of nice, this little picture right here, this little box is, it gives us kind of an overview, which is more, it's, it's very convenient for us um, when we start doing some of our analysis. It's a snapshot of the technical opinions that we're going to look at. And it breaks it down in some key highlights that will be found as we look at a deeper um, inspection of these technical indicators. So if we look at Apple here, it says that, you know, it is 100% buy and that the short terms are strengthening and the long terms fully support the trend. But then the caveat here is that there is that potential for maybe a contra trend trade as we are in an overbought 
uh, territory. Now, let's talk about the opinion, the bar chart opinion. It's an agglomeration of 13 technical indicators that range from short to long term. Now, one of the questions we typically get in to support is somebody might say something like this. Hey, you know, market analysts are giving this stock a buy recommendation or a hold recommendation, and bar chart opinion is giving a sell recommendation. What gives or how does that work, right? Just remember that an analyst, a stock market analyst, is making a, a recommendation or a rating based on other criteria and most likely just fundamentals. In this case, you know, most likely uh, earnings or expected earnings. Bar chart's opinion is purely technical. It's just based on technical indicators. So let's talk about some of the terminology and as we go through here. So the overall average is a composite score that is determined by the buy and sell signals of these 13 indicators. Now you can see that of the 13 indicators for Apple, they all register a buy signal. And that is why we have 100% buy overall rating. Now, it's the common interpretation of the indicator and the signal. In other words, in moving average theory, markets tend to trend, excuse me, markets that are trending tend to stay above an uptrending uh, moving average or below a downtrending moving average. So let me show you an example of that. So here's the 50-day moving average. And if I click on this little arrow right here, this will show me a chart of the 50-day moving average. And that's what we see here. So an uptrending market in a 50-day moving average, because moving averages are lagging, price will tend to stay above. The common interpretation says that when price gets above the moving average, that will create a buy signal. And that's exactly what we see back here in January. Now, if price closes below the 50-day moving average, then it would create a sell signal. And as we see right now, you know, we are just maintaining a buy signal in the 50-day moving average. So the overall average now is this. We add all of these indicators together and then what are their ratings and that will give us our overall uh, percentage. So current strength, that represents a long-term perspective of each of our indicators all added together. In other words, trend. It's looking at those indicators and deciphering what that trend is. The current direction represents a short-term perspective of what is happening inside of these indicators over the past three days. In other words, momentum. So let me say that again. When we look at this instrument panel, I want you to think about strength as your trend and direction as your momentum. Now, we look at our overall opinion here, it's 100%, all of our indicators are indicating a buy signal. But if I go in from opinion to strength and direction, now this is gonna tell me the conditions of those particular indicators. The strength, the trend of that indicator and the momentum, the direction of these indicators. Now, let me just go into help here for a second. And, you know, you can get in any lot more deeper analysis of what we're kind of talking about here. But what I wanted to just talk, show you is that the short term is looking at uh, what has happened over the last 20 days, medium term is over the last 50, and a longer term is somewhere between 100 and 200 days. 
and then how we kind of score this, how do we give it a plus or minus um, system. So the strength signal, again, we're looking at over the past 200 days, what has my trend been doing over the last 200 days? Now for futures markets, a little bit different. It's only 100 days. And when you look at futures market indicators, they're going to be different, but we're going to just concentrate on equities today. So we're just going to concentrate on those. So the overall strength opinion is going to be based on these categories from minimum to maximum, right? So in other words, if I have a maximum strength, right? That is the strongest that uh, my trend has been in that historical bit, period. And you can see for Apple today, we are at maximum. In other words, this is the strongest Apple has been over the last 200 days in terms of, of all of the overall trends. Now, the strength on the indicators themselves have a different set of indicators, maximum to a week, just a little bit different. Think about these like in percentiles, 20, 40, 60, 80, 100 percent, you know, range. Um, hold, I'm not going to go in a lot in it about hold. It's just, a, you know, if you have um, a combination of, let's say, an equal number of buys and sells, then you will get a hold, overall hold signal. And then you might see some strengthening or weakening based on you know, the overall hold signal. And then finally, our signal direction. And what the signal direction here is interpreting for us is what is called a divergence. In other words, it compares current price or that indicator what has it been doing over the last three days, right? How far is price from that indicator? And is price or that indicator itself, price, in, price returning towards the indicator, that divergence that's narrowing or weakening, or it's accelerating away, right? It's, it's strengthening. So this is kind of our momentum, right? We're gonna look at this in terms of a momentum aspect all right so let's do this so let's go into our individual indicator so let's look at our medium indicator here this is our 50-day moving average as i just showed you and it's given us a buy soon i just showed you and our strength our trend is strong right right near the high not the maximum but the strong and our momentum is the strongest right so it's telling us if i look at my 50-day moving average I'm probably going to see a very st steep angle of inclination or that that rate of change is very strong. It's exactly what we see, right? And if we look at this over a longer period of time, you can see that, you know, this is really where um, that trend, that strength of that trend has been consistent, right? And that that rate of change or that angle in inclination is probably the steepest that we have seen in a long period of time. Now, if I go back to my momentum, right? The strongest momentum. Well, what is that telling us, right? Is price moving away from our moving average? Yes, that's exactly what we're seeing again. Let's look at a different time frame. Maybe let's say I'm going to look at my 20 day moving average here. So here I can see my 20 day moving average is an average. It said it's in terms of the trend. But what is price now currently doing? It is diverting away from that moving average. In other words, it's strengthening, right? Or it's getting strongest. And as if the strongest says that it's been in the last three days compared to past three day periods you know maybe not the strongest but certainly uh, you can see that we're the farthest away from um, our moving average that we've been in a while so that divergence right so let's go back now so giving you this kind of this insight into what this represents, this instrument panel. 
And so let's look at what it's saying for Apple. So it's saying here that we're in a powerful uptrend, right? We're in the top 1% of, um, of all stocks and that our momentum, our direction is strongest, right? It's very strong momentum. So if I go to the chart, the Apple chart, what am I going to see? Well, I'm going to probably see a very strong upward trend, which in the next last few days, I'm going to see price is accelerating away from my moving. That's exactly what we see here. A strong trending market with an acceleration of momentum. Now let's look at this in the last three days, right? Here was current price and the market gapped higher. And then since then, the next three days, prices has, has only accelerated farther away in the last three days. So the momentum is very, very strong um, at conditions. Right. So that's a basic understanding of the terminology, but let's start putting this to application. So in any of my watch lists or in my portfolios or even any of our data pages, what you can do is use this tool to help you with doing some trend analysis. So right underneath here, this is a, a rebalancing portfolio. This is one that we did in our market and close, I think it was last Friday, where we looked at some of the stocks that could potentially benefit from a rebalancing of the NASDAQ 100. And under here is our views, our main views. And I drop down here, I'm going to go to the technical, and the technical will take me to the opinion. Again, this is our overall opinion. So if I have a 100% opinion, it tells me that all of those 13 technical indicators are uh, interpreting a buy signal. And I can sort by opinion. I could look at, you know, which ones are the hundreds or which one are buys, which ones are sells. But if I wanted to go inside of, let's say, in this case, Broadcom, I could go to links. And now I can get into those details again of the bar chart opinion. Again, remember, we're very confident in this. This is a one click away from your watch list. And there is Broadcom. All right, so what do we see here? So under Broadcom, I'm looking at this. And what's my analysis? All right, so 100% buy signal. So that means that all the technical indicators are all registering a buy, common interpretation. What's my current strength? What's my current trend? Maximum. In other words, the rate of change and the acceleration of all of these trends is probably as we, if we add it all up together, it's really, really strong. What's my current direction? What's my momentum? Well, it's about average. So I have a long-term historical uptrend, but my momentum is just average. Now, what this could mean is that my stock has lost maybe a little bit of momentum. Maybe it's not moving up as fast as it has in the past. Maybe it's slowing down, right? It's just telling me that it's average, right? So what could I do? Well, I can go into strength and direction and look at those individual indicators. And what do we see? Well, when we look at our trends of our different indicators, what we see is that the medium to longer term trends are very strong, right? The maximum. But our shorter term are getting soft or our average and their momentums are weakening so how can i interpretate this well what i see is a strong market that has a short-term slowdown maybe a little bit of of a retracement you know maybe the market's backing up now how can i use this well maybe this is, might be an opportunity to buy a dip in a very strong market and we'll look at that in a second. Or because I see the trends in the longer term also weakening and weakening in the shorter term, this might become a stock 
that has moved very strongly over a longer period of time and is now showing signs of exhaustion or starting to change direction. This could be a good uh, candidate for what we could call a mean reversion trade. In other words, not necessarily a sell, but maybe in an options trade where I look to capture some um, volatility or I look for a price to pull back, or I'm going to wait patiently as a longer term investor until my conditions get a little bit stronger. So let's look at that. So here's our 20 day moving average. And what do we see? Well, we see that our strength is soft, but our direction is weakening. In other words, we have an uptrending 20 day moving average, not a very strong one, but the momentum is changing. So again, here you can see our 20 day moving average. Is it the steepest inclination? Is it the greatest re change rate of change that we've seen over the last 200 days? No, it's not. Is it the lowest? You know, no, it's not. It's somewhere in between. It's weak. It's on the lower end of the range, but it's still trending up. And what is our momentum? What has price done over the last three days? Well, it is moving closer to our moving average. That divergence is narrowing. In other words, it is weakening. Weakening. All right. But let's look at, you know, our 50 versus our 200. This is where we're seeing the strength in this trend. So that indicator is at the maximum and it is the strongest. In other words, the momentum is the greatest that we've seen over the last uh, medium term, 50 days. And so, yeah, here we can see our 50 day moving average is accelerating, right? And our 200 day moving average is still turning up. So very positive that our 50 day moving average is diverting away or divergence is increasing, right? It's getting farther away. That means the momentum of this indicator is very, very strong. Even though price in recent has turned a little bit, the these two average moving averages, the 50 is moving away. So it is the strongest, the farthest that it has been between from the 200 day moving average. So again, how could I use this? Well, maybe I might think about this in terms of a trade for a mean reversion. So let's go to the chart. And what do we see here? Well, we see that, you know, again, our market has been trending very strongly, but we're kind of losing a little bit of that momentum. We saw that in our uh, indicators. Our short term was weakening and our longer term was weakening. Only our medium term was still holding strength. And so what I could do is look at some technical indicators that look at momentum. And two of the ones that I'm that I like, let me blow this out here, you know, is relative strength and MACDs. And this is a daily chart. And so what do I see here? Well, I see the market that is continuing to make highs, but our relative strength is not reflecting that. It's actually making lower peak highs. And this is called negative divergence. And this would be an indication of a stock that maybe is finding a little bit of exhaustion or is peaking. So this might be a mean reversion trade. In other words, I could wait for price to revert back to one of my means, one of my moving averages, or I could look at maybe shorting this particular stock. Notice our MACD as well is showing negative divergence. So here is a chart of all of our moving averages, my 200, 150 day. And so what I might do is if I wanted to buy Broad, Broadcom, I might wait for us to re-engage the 200 day moving average, or maybe I might even wait till it comes back to the 50 day moving average. Or I, if I'm a contra trend trader, then I could use these as potential targets and then manage my risk uh, accordingly. All right, so let's go back to our watch list.
And let's look at T-Mobile here, because this one is a sell. So let's look at our instrument panel. So what's our current strength? Well, what's our trend? Our trend is soft. Now, I'm throwing you a little bit of a curveball here, aren't I? Because what's our overall average? Our overall average is a sell signal. This means that of our 13 indicators, we're seeing a cautiously or neutral sell signal. In other words, we're going to see probably a few more sell indicators than I will see buy indicators, but not a lot versus longs. And so my strength is soft. So a soft sell signal probably just telling me that my market is this trend might be weakening or this trend has prices now what returned or rallied up and that's why we're probably seeing some a few buy indicators what's my momentum well my momentum is about average not really any particular momentum one way or the other but in terms of my overall still with my trend so let's look at strength and direction and that's exactly what we see our longer term trends are still sells but our shorter terms have turned buys our shorter terms have turned buys but they're weak or weakest so they're not really influencing our stock price. But how do we get a 20-day moving average to turn by? Well, price has to get above the moving average. How does a 50-day moving average get a buy? Price has to get above the 50-day moving average. So what we're probably seeing is here is if I go to the chart, is I'm probably going to see a stock that has been moving downward for a, a longer period of time. But in the short run, we're probably seeing price has returned and given us some short term or medium term buy signals. So how can I use this? Well, you know, I might wait for price to return to the mean or return to an area of resistance as a shorting opportunity. And that's kind of what we're seeing here. Or what I wait now for is my momentum, which is average, right? You can see where kind of our momentum is just going sideways. But in the last couple of days, you know, we're seeing a lot more momentum to the downside in concert with our trends, our higher time frame trends. So what I might do here is wait for market to break out of this little bit of a range. In other words, let's see if we can see an acceleration of our downward trends. Now let's go back to our opinion. What's our opinion been doing? Well, a month ago, we were 100%. And then a week ago, we were only 56%. And now we're only 40%. Again, I'm going from a very strong sell signal to a weak sell string signal and that could be an indication that this stock is starting to turn around but maybe i'm not going to buy this stock until i see the overall buy signal appear and how will that happen well that would probably happen as our longer term indicators go from sell to buy so what i might do is wait for a potential breakout or a breakout above my resistance so one of the go-tos that I have is kind of my, you know, hard stop is I don't like to buy stocks unless they're above the 200-day moving average. So I have currently I have a sell signal of my 200-day moving average. So I'm going to wait until price breaks above my 200-day moving average, give me a buy signal, and that'll probably turn a lot of the other longer-term indicators into a buy signal and then this would become more of a breakout candidate waiting for price to break out of resistance getting the confirmation with the moving averages and then seeing it as a result of my strength and direction 
So that's kind of how we can look at individual stocks in terms of strength and direction. But let's look, put this application to the next level. So one of the things we can do is I can go into stocks here. And over here where it says trading signals is there are a variety of different pages that you can go to. And all these pages are related to our strength and direction indicator. So first of all, the new recommendations is all those individual indicators that I just showed you. Um, here's our overall buy or sell signal. And so it's telling us today that, you know, there's 849 that have an overall buy signal, new that have just created a new buy signal. But here you can say, let's say, you know, maybe that 50 day moving average is one of the indicators that you like. Well, today there's 136 stocks that had created a new buy signal. So you could go into there and look at those stocks and do your technical analysis based on whatever trading plan that you have. And this would give you that, you know, that jumping off point. Stocks to own, top stocks to own. Well, here what we're doing is and we're taking the the highest current signal rating based on the combination of both our signal strength and our signal direction, our trend and the momentum. Now, how this one is kind of put together is that there's a ratio and the ratio is 10 to one trend to momentum. But what we're really seeing here is a lot of stocks that have a very strong trends and have strong momentum. Again, so this would be kind of your jumping on the bang wagon type of stocks in terms of uh, you know going with the trend or because you know these ones are really kind of gaining a lot of momentum these could potentially be some candidates that would look for overbought conditions but i would stay probably with you know go with the trend so if we look at a couple of charts let's just look at a couple of charts here you know again very strong trend and you know even though this is a red candle, the market jumps higher, right? Our momentum is higher. Again, you know, a lot of the same types of stocks, right? A lot of the same kind of trend momentum uh, indications. Strength, top single strength. Now, what this does is it looks at that trend analysis right at the top one percent those that have that greatest angle of inclination that those that have the greatest rate of change and you can see that you know it were, it's sorted by alphabetical here but you know apple was one of the ones that was at the top one percent that was on the one that i showed you um, earlier this morning again so these are stocks that have a really good very very strong trend so you could follow that trend with certain uh, trend following um, trade plans and then the next one is our top signal direction and this is kind of where I do my fishing and let's think about this one well this one is our highest current direction in other words our highest current momentum and so we know that all these stocks have in the last three days have a very strong momentum probably Price is moving, maybe moving very strongly. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a little bit of a different tack here. So I'm going to come back into the screener here. And I'm going to go under my filters. Here's my bar chart opinion. And I'm going to overall, I want to look at all those that have an overall buy, which most of these will be. Um, and then what I'm going to do is I already know that I have a very strong momentum. I want to go to my trend and I'm going to add my trend. Now, what I want to do here is I don't want those stocks that have already accelerated away, right? That have a very, very max or top 1% like Apple. What I want to do is I want to kind of look for those ones that have a good trend, right? A well-established trend, but you know, maybe not as strong. And what is now happening is that price is starting to accelerate, right? That that maybe that trend will start to accelerate as well. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna filter on good to strong. In other words, I just know that this is gonna over a long period of time, I'm gonna see a well-established trend. And now I'm looking for acceleration in that trend. 
So these are going to be breakout candidates. These are the ones that are going to see where my trend is good and now my momentum is picking up and these candidates are going to be potentially breakout type stocks. So here is my list. Here's my flip charts. And for the first one here, you know, Aaron Holdings. And yeah, look exactly what we see. We come to an area of resistance and we're poised to break out. So this would be a great breakout candidate. Again, another stock that is gaining momentum and long, a nice strong trend and recent the momentum had paused and now it's starting to pick back up again so again i'm probably this would be a good breakout candidate what i might do here is sort these not from the strongest trends but maybe just a good trend again that was at aaron's here's ethan allen right this has a good trend right and we're starting to see momentum pick up Again, if we look at this in terms of technical analysis, just so look at this picture, what do we see here? A nice little double bottom. And, you know, some of you might be familiar with the concept of a cup and handle, you know, kind of a cup and handle here. And so this would be a great momentum type stock. All right. So that's one way I use strength and direction. So let's do another way. And this way is kind of a top-down analysis. And this is really what a lot of institutional trade, how they look at the market. So first, what we're going to do is we're going to go into market performance. And what this does is it looks at the 11 sectors that are in the S&P plus the S&P. And the theory is we want to look in those sectors that are outperforming the S&P. So it's hard to see here right now, but if you're doing it this home, you can follow along. So the S&P is in black. So what we want to do is we want to eliminate all those sectors that are below the S&P. So that looks like my aqua, my two purples, my red, my pink, my blue and my gray. And all I am now is I'm seeing those sectors that are above the S&P. Now tech has been one of the ones that's been hot of recent. And I think there's a lot of uh, great tech stocks out there, a lot of great momentum, but maybe the valuations are too high for us. So let's look at maybe one of these other ones. And the one that I notice here is the green, which is industrials. So industrials are outperforming the S&P. So I'll come down to industrials. I'll click on industrials. These are the stocks that are in the industrial sector. I'm gonna to go to my screener. I'm going to go to my bar chart opinion. I wanna look at those that have a buy. I want to look at my strength, my trend. Again, I'm going to look at those that are, have a good trend, good, strong, maybe max. And again, I'm going to take a little bit of a different tack here. What's my momentum I'm going to look for? Well, I'm looking for opportunity, right? I'm looking for those that are outperforming. Here's an outperforming sector, but maybe there might be some opportunities in these strong trends. So I'm going to look at momentum from a weakening to average. These candidates are probably ones where price has momentarily paused or moved back towards our trends, a buy a dip scenario, or I'll look for that strengthening like I just showed you for the breakout. And again, let's look at our results. And I'm going to sort now by direction and not the strengthening direction, but let's say the weakening, right? This buy the dip candidate. And the first one that I see here is GE. The, my momentum has weakened, but my trend is still strong. So this might be a great momentum, excuse me, a great buy the dip trade. Now, what I did is I 
before we came on, I looked at this in terms of just technical analysis in terms of you know candlesticks. And here's a good area where I might think that I would like to buy uh, GE, right in an area where price had stopped going down. And it looks like you know if you're familiar with flag formations, so this looks like a bear flag, excuse me, a bull flag. And that big green candle where price exploded away. So that's probably a good level that would be make a good buying opportunity with proper risk management. And then what did we say? Well, maybe we want to look for some of those mean reversions, right? Reversions to some of our moving averages. And so if I call up the 20, 50, 100 day, And what do we see? Well, that pink box is right in line with our 20 day moving average. And if we look at what has happened, let's say over the last three months in GE, here is a stock that continually, that holds that 20 day moving average. Stocks that are in an uptrend tend to stay above their moving averages. So every time it dipped down to the 20 day moving average, it looks like it was a buying opportunity. So what I've done now is I use the strength and direction indicators to help me find a buy the dips opportunity. All right, another way I can use my strength and direction indicator is I can go into investing. And what I'm gonna look here is I'm gonna look at top performing stocks. Again, probably these are going to be stocks that are in right relationship to the S&P or the greater indexes is probably are outperforming. These are stocks that are going to have good, strong trends. Now, notice that I do have my default at one month, but you can change this based on a daily basis or five days or a longer period of time. And it's telling you those industries that are outperforming right now. For instance, right, oil and gas trilling has been one of the uh, outperformers in the last month. So what I can do now is like I did the top down analysis that just showed you with the sectors, now I'm looking at a very specific uh, industry. So the one that I was kind of interested in is, was steel. Now again, remember these are top form performing stocks and this is gonna give you the top three performing steel stocks. And what might happen is you might go in here and you say, oh, you know, I like this stock, but it's you know, already made a big move, right? This is the top performing in this, in this industry. That maybe there might be some opportunities if this sector, this industry is one of the outperformers, maybe there might be some other opportunities inside of this among those stocks that are in that, industry that are doing well but are maybe at the second tier right or maybe are, are trying to catch up right to the greater market so again here's the top 100 percent, but maybe in the second tier maybe in this 88 maybe in the 72 one of these stocks could have the proper trend and or momentum as price is moving higher that it would give me an opportunity to ride this wave of this particular sector. So what I'll do is I'll go again, I'll go into my screener, and I'm gonna look for buy opportunities. Again, if I'm looking at my strength, right? I don't wanna see those ones that have already you know, parabolic rise. I want to see ones that just have a good, strong trend. But now, instead of looking for that weakness like we did with our direction before, what, what I'm going to do is I want to see those that are accelerating, right? Again, more likely breakout candidates. So good, strong trend with potential strengthening of momentum. and it breaks it down to these five. So again, let's do this based on strong and strengthening, um, strong or strengthening momentum. And so there's a couple of candidates. So first of all, let's, let's look at Foster. And you know, if I look at this stock, 
I look at this chart, you know, this doesn't really jazz me up, right? Certainly the trend from left to right is up. Um, the momentum, yes, it gapped up a little bit today. It doesn't, you know, and, and it does look like a potential breakout candidate. You know, you know, maybe I could find a better um, candidate. And I think Zeus is the one that I was looking at this morning, right? Nice left to right uptrend. We have just come to an area of resistance and we've broken out about it. Looks like the stock is trying to gather some energy on this breakout. And what maybe what we're seeing in this stock is, is it's getting ready to not, not only break above this 53.33 level, but maybe go back and test this most recent 52 week highs. Again, these aren't recommendations. I'm just showing you how to use the strength and um, direction indicator to help define those particular candidates. Okay, where are we at, Thomas? Oh, right on schedule. So I just want to pause here and look at a couple of the questions that are, are popping up, Thomas. Any ones that are particular that uh, you think might be pertinent? Well, I think, um, let's see, we have one question asking John whether there's a link between uh, strong maximum scores in strength and direction and overbought indicators such as RSI. Yeah, exactly. So I think I showed you that one in, for instance, in um, the Broadcom, the example in that, that when you get into that top 100%, right, that 1%, or you see stocks that have super strong strength in all of those trends and also super strong momentum, yes, those could be potential um, reversal or mean reversions or overbought, however you want to define it, you know, but, you know, it's very difficult to step on uh, railroad tracks and see, you know, train come down the tra tracks at a hundred miles an hour and you, and put your hand out there and say, Hey, train, stop and reverse, because I think you've gone too far too fast. I think what you can do is you can use the, that strength in, direction indicator to find those potential candidates and then wait for those um, tools like you, for instance, like I showed in the negative divergence in Broadcom, or uh, I think the, the question you mentioned is RSI or PPOs in terms of a change in momentum, probably in the shorter term, and then getting some confirmation and some kind of price action. I mean, if we go back to our Broadcom, you know, I'm not going to make a recommendation here, but again, you know, that mean reversion. So, you know, if I'm looking at something, you know, maybe you could do, you could do Bollinger Bands as well, but if you, know, if you broke, let's say this most recent low, that's below the 20 day moving average, then there's probably a higher probability that we're gonna go back and test the 50 day moving average, right? So, you know, it's about risk versus reward and also getting that that confirmation, right? That price confirmation. So be careful with those, but I, I think that's a great uh, solution. So I see another question that says, um, what is my favorite indicator for both strength and direction? So I, I, I mix them up. I like a lot of different ones. So for instance, like breakouts, um, some of those breakout candidates, um, I like to see, I like to use Bollinger Bands to help me confirm those breakouts. Um, you know, advanced uh, ADX lines sometimes help with that. Um, again, I like Bollinger Bands for those mean reversion trades as well. So that's one of the, one of the tools I use. Um, for a shorter term, you know, maybe I might use uh, an average true range uh, for like an intraday for a day trade. You know, I'll look for those buy the dip candidates. I've come into an area where I think is a good buy. Then I'll look in my average true range and I'll try to buy in the lower half of my average true range. For instance, let's say I have a stock that moves three dollars a day average true range is three dollars well i'll try to see if i can buy a dip where that stock has moved down two dollars on an intraday basis that might be a good buying opportunity 
because I'm buying with a higher time frame trend. So I'll use a lower time frame analysis with a higher time frame trend. Okay. So um, I don't see many more questions. You see more questions, Thomas, or did we get most of them? We have been getting many, many questions, John. I'm just trying to go through them and see which ones um, are good. So, um, yeah, a lot of questions are more about how to use the website, yes? Yeah, a few of those. Um, we got one question here, John. Why use the MACD as opposed to stochastics? Again, it's up to the individual trader. Um, if that's the one that you like, I'm, I do have a stochastic template um you know the broadcom show that negative divergence in the macd and the rsi but i do also have a stochastics one that i use and yeah you know again uh I, i'm not not saying i wouldn't use it, it just you know it just depends on the situ situation so yeah i just mix i just mix it up and look for the right indicator for the in individual uh, conditions. I kind of like look for stochastics for reversals of uh, momentum to give me a better indication of um, trading trading opportunities. John, we got a good question here. Um, what clues might you look for to determine whether a stock is on a pullback or if it's the beginning of a new downtrend? Well, again, you know, we have to look at the context of all of our trends in the short, intermediate, and longer term. And again, I think if we look at what determines an uptrend, for instance, again, let's look at Broadcom. What determines an uptrend? An uptrend is a series of higher highs and higher lows. So for me, for me to say that this market is moving from an uptrend to a downtrend, what I want to see is a series of two lower highs and also breaking a most recent um, higher low. So a series of two lower highs and then a significant break of, let's say, a swing, a daily or a weekly swing low in this case that would be you know somewhere around here so do we see you know two lower highs yeah i think we can say that we have in have we broken a higher low no we haven't so this still is in an uptrend but if i break this low and then set a new higher low excuse me lower high <laughs> that would be more of a confirmation of a downtrend okay and again it depends on what time frame you're looking in right so if we looked at this in terms of a shorter time frame let's say a 60 minute time frame you know, which i think i already had up here uh that might be beginning of a downtrend but if i look at this in terms of a daily right still making higher highs in higher lows. So this is not the beginning of a downtrend, not until, you know, we've gotten way down here would be a potential of a downtrend. All right. All right, Thomas, I think that's a good spot to end. I think that was a good, um, good question to finish with. Yeah. And I just want to remind everybody, you know, we got a lot of questions, guys. We couldn't get to all of them. So if you want, just go ahead and email those to support at barchart.com. One of our team members, we have a great team. One of our team members will get back to you uh, right away. Yeah. And if they have difficulties answering the questions, a lot of the questions are passed along to me where I have a little bit more time to think about them. Um, so don't be afraid to ask and you might be surprised on the response you get. So yeah, send those through. I appreciate and it. And shame, shameless plug time, John. But if you guys want a more intimate sort of experience where you can ask as many questions as you want to John, come check out our market on close show. It happens every Friday, usually at uh, 2 30 PM central standard time. If you're a premier member, come on over and, uh, and check us out. Which makes to an, another good point is a lot of the things that I showed you, a lot of the screeners are part of our new uh, Premier and Plus packages for a few free members. I think, for instance, like on the top stocks or the stock uh, uh, opinions, 
you know, you might be able to see the top 20 stocks in that list, but you might not be able to screen or go below much below uh, that level. So you need to have a plus or premium membership to get to that screening capabilities. But one of the nice things about it is that you can uh, do a 30 day uh, free trial process. So I would recommend those of you who are not uh, in our plus or premier category to give that a, uh, give that a shot. So that's my shameless plug there. <laughs> and for next week, our upcoming webinars, uh, we're going to look at two concepts. One is looking at what is happening in the pre-market and incorporating that with our traders cheat sheet. So if you're not familiar with that, um, we do have some, um, let me see where that is. Here it is, pre-market trading. We'll look at uh, pre-market gainers or negative losers, gaps ups, and also uh, we'll look at uh, pre-market volume. And then we'll incorporate that with our traders uh, cheat sheet to look for, you know, how can we use this to apply this in uh, maybe some day trading, maybe some uh, swing trading applications to look for opportunities for buying or selling. So come along next week and I think you will enjoy that session. Uh, Thomas, thanks for stepping in. I appreciate your help. Gene, get back to us safely next week. And folks, be safe out there. The best of health and the good of all trading.